guys, Super FV here, back at another video. And before we start with this, remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel, like the video if you do end up liking it, and let's get on into it. So today's video is about these four little things that I have on each arm. These are the CL Racing Race LED slash PCB wires. Uh, they come in a four pack and in various colors and two different sizes and these are awesome <laughs> they're just really they're cool they really don't serve much of a, of a of a purpose other than it being pretty cool to look at uh, i got these in the purple colorway uh and they're just they're just cool uh and, and we're going to talk about how to install them and uh and why you might want them so uh let's get on into it so these cl racing led uh pcb things uh they go for 7.95 uh, and uh, they come in two different sizes the 35 millimeter and, uh, and 25 millimeter version This is the 35 millimeter version uh, And uh, it fits perfectly in my 5 inch setup um, If you have a 3 inch setup you probably want to go for the 25 millimeter version uh, And even if you want you can put a 25 millimeter version on a 5 inch setup as well Because it is kind of crowded if you can see right here if my autofocus wants to act up real quick um, Yeah, it's like really tight. Uh, it's like barely on, on the arm uh, so maybe if you want uh, it to be a little uh, less tight and not have to snip the motor wires that short Then you probably want to go for a 25 millimeter uh, Version for a 5 inch, um, but you know, yeah, that's up to you ultimately uh, regardless of size I believe they're 795 uh, you know whether you get the 25 millimeter version or the 35 millimeter version uh, They come in blue green uh, purple red and white uh, I got them in purple. I like purple. Purple is a cool color. Um, and uh, yeah, they are very bright. They are very, very bright. <laughs> they're they're pretty bright. Um, what they come with in the box is literally just the four LEDs and the uh, and the heat shrink. That's why I didn't really do any sort of B roll for this part. Um, uh, usually, <laughs> usually I take it and do a little B roll, but uh, it's literally just four LEDs uh, uh, strips and uh, uh, clear heat shrink for. Uh, for each of them yeah so that's about it um it's a very simple product uh people who probably might want this are uh, are racers uh who um in certain events in certain like more dark events they require uh to have uh race leds installed onto their race quads uh in order for uh you know the the people to see the quads much better in, in the dark uh or if you're flying at night uh you know uh, wherever you're allowed to fly at night um you know you probably want to be able to see your quad as well or you want people uh or nearby who, who who might be nearby to see the quad when it's uh, when it's coming at you especially when you have like a super black drone like this like my, my everything that i have on here is pretty dark other than the white feet on here uh, it's probably really really difficult to see this at night when it's zipping by at like <laughs> at like nearly 97 miles an hour and uh having these leds on there uh definitely will uh will help uh, uh visibility for for the uh um, the non-pilot so the person that's like watching or uh, maybe some pedestrians that are just watch walking by uh, you know this will give them an extra sense of awareness um, uh, other than the fact that this probably shrieks <laughs> like has like a big noise that come uh, come inherent with FPV drones uh, other than that you will see like the bright lights on each four arms coming at you um, if uh, if if that's the case so uh, that's probably like the main real use case other than that uh, it's cool to have that's pretty much it uh, I can't really think of any other reason you'd probably want this other than the fact that it's cool uh race uh events probably might require you to have some or uh you just want to have it on your freestyle quad if, if or a racing quad if you fly at night or in a dark setting and you want people to actually see your quad uh, uh to reduce the risk of an accident uh happening so uh yeah that's that's pretty much it <laughs> that's that's like the literally the only few reasons that you might actually want this so that's pretty much it so let's talk about uh installing it uh and uh, i'm gonna you know i didn't really go through a whole tutorial kind of thing for installing it it's just a bunch of cutscenes um, that I uh, put together because the installation steps are really, really easy. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So real quick before I actually let the uh, the, the whole tutorial kind of thing uh, uh, roll out, the most important thing when you're installing these is to install it with the capacitor side towards the motors. I installed it the wrong way for two of my motors and my quad's been acting up uh, with, with, with hot motors and everything. And the instant I changed it, uh, everything went back to normal and, uh, and fixed itself. So it's very crucial that you install it with the capacitors side going towards the motors. So the capacitors towards the motors, okay? Uh, not the other way around. Um, in this video, uh, you, you'll see if you look closely, I have two of the motors the wrong way. Um, 
and uh you know i I hadn't noticed that there were any issues um until um recently (laughs) i realized that my motors were actually pretty pretty hot um but uh once i switched it back uh to the right way everything went back to normal and and my quads back to flying perfectly fine so um yeah that's the rule of thumb please do not uh mess that up like i did uh um do it towards the motors the faster side of the cl racing led strip towards the motors uh and then you can install it just how i uh just how I install it in the in in the clips. In the clips, I do have it installed the opposite way. Uh, so install it with the capacitor side towards the motors. Okay. All right. So the first thing that I like to do is actually pre-tin the pads appropriately. Put a decent amount of solder on there. Uh, then I cut the wire, uh, you know, uh, down the middle, and then I like to mark um, the the wires to know which wire goes where with uh, with a piece of red tape. Uh, and then I take a clothespin and uh, kind of really grip it down on, I grip the LED down onto the arm, um, and then cut the wires to the appropriate length on both sides. Uh, and then I usually like to start with the um, the side that's closest to the uh, uh, ESC. Uh, that way it's easier to work with. Uh, pre-tin and then solder it uh, appropriately. Um, you know, put a decent amount of heat on there and everything. Uh, And then I like to put the heat shrink uh, through, exposing the other side. Uh, I pretend the other side. uh, And then just go ahead and solder it up uh, on the other side as well, just like how you did uh, the the side that's close to the ESC. Uh, And then uh, slide the heat shrink all the way down through once it's all cooled down. Uh, That way it doesn't shrink prematurely. And then apply heat and you're good to go. So now that we have the installation out of the way, the basic installation out of the way, let's talk about a few tips that I recommend uh, when you're actually installing this to make things much easier. Uh, I would say take off the front plate, obviously. Uh, Take off the GoPro mount, obviously, if you have one. Um, You know, just that way you can work on everything much easier. Uh, And then, uh, you know, kind of strip everything down to where you only have your four ESCs, your motor frame, your motors, and then uh, the motor wires. Uh, That way it's much easier to work with. Um, If you already have uh, pre-installed, like, motors you already have your motor soldered on there uh make sure you know which wire goes to which um you know like which uh, part of your esc uh that way um you don't mix it up and actually uh, end up reversing your motor direction because uh, then you either have to go into your esc and in, uh, settings and, and flip the motor direction or uh you're gonna have to unsolder the wire and solder back on and everything so the next tip i suggest is to uh solder uh the three joints that are closest to the escs first that way you have all this wire uh that way you can put your heat shrink down into those wires um and uh, uh you can uh have enough space to work on uh the other uh three uh pads up here um that way the heat shrink doesn't prematurely shrink uh, you don't want that to happen um and then uh you know you can you know you can move it around much easier versus if you if you solder this top one first then you're kind of stuck with um, with the heat shrink kind of being over there uh, and you won't have space to do your solder work down here. So I suggest you solder these three first, uh, slide the heat shrink down, uh, and then, uh, you you know, I, I was able to slide it down to like about here. Uh, that way this part I could, uh, I could work on with these three solder joints. Then slide it over once the, the solder joints have cooled down a little bit. Um, that way it doesn't shrink prematurely. So uh, my third tip is that um, I suggest you turn on your, uh, your quad before you shrink down your heat shrinks uh, and apply heat to it. Uh, that way you know for a fact that everything uh, is working properly and the lights are working properly and the motors are spinning in the right direction and, and you didn't miss, uh, uh, miss wire everything. Uh, so um, everything is pretty one-to-one. Uh, again, I just want to uh, talk about the first tip that I said. Everything's pretty one-to-one. So the wire that goes into here uh, is the wire that goes out to here. So you want to match the two wires if you already have a pre-done um, you know, motor connection. Uh, that way you don't accidentally uh, reverse your motor direction. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. There really is no other uh, tips that I would, uh, I would really say because it's a very simple and easy process uh, <laughs> to solder everything on there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to turn off the lights, plug in the battery, uh, and then show you how everything works. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to turn it on uh, with my uh, just you put turn it on into uh, acro mode. Uh, that way, it's more chill and the desk and doesn't go crazy. Uh, and then I'm gonna just mess around with the right and left uh, uh, stick right here, like this. Uh, and uh, you'll see how that how depending on the direction that I'm I'm using on my stick, the lights get brighter on on, on either side.
So yeah, that's pretty much it um, for the testing. Uh, I didn't really go super high in the throttle because I didn't want the motors to get pretty hot. Uh, you know, just being idle on the desk going up and down in throttle, that's not that's not that's not recommended uh so uh yeah that's pretty much it for the video it's a very short video um it's a cool thing to have uh there is no risk with it uh it's pretty nice to have just you know just kind of cool you know you have leds on there <laughs> you can get the more expensive and cooler leds there's a little uh those are a little more difficult to install if you want those you can go ahead and do those as well uh and uh yeah that's about it for the video so thank you so much for watching remember to like comment and subscribe and uh yeah pretty much it uh, i'll see you in the next one